Joseph Smith got one of the aftermath diseases from this epidemic. It started as a large fever blister in his left shoulder, just under his shoulder blade. And the doctor came and he lanced that. More than a quart of fluid came out of that. And Joseph said the pain shot like lightning down into his left leg. It was a, an excruciating pain that went on for some time. The doctors didn't know how to deal with this very well. And so they thought, well, we'll bleed the patient. So they came to Joseph and they, they made an eight inch incision along his, his left shin. Well, this relieved the pain for about a day, but then it grew much worse. And the only relief that he would receive is when his brother Hiram would actually take his leg in his hands and put a little pressure on each side of the leg and hold it there for long periods of time. It was all that Joseph could do to get through this pain. Well, this went on for some weeks and the doctors came back. This time they made a 14 inch incision to bleed him again, but it made it much worse. You see what Joseph had was osteomyelitis, a dreaded bone disease. It just so happened, and that's a code word for it. it, was providential. It just so happened that Dartmouth Medical School was just seven miles up the road from their cabin there in West Lebanon, New Hampshire. And Dr. Nathan Smith had founded that college, and so there he was, probably the most skilled surgeon in the United States at that time. He and Dr. Stone, Dr. Perkins came down with maybe 12 or 13 other medical students and they came to the cabin knowing that the only thing they could do to save the boy's life was to amputate his leg. They said this to Mother Smith and she said, this hit me like a bolt of lightning out of the blue. I said to them, you must not, I repeat, you must not take off the boy's leg. And then she, I believe with a stroke of inspiration said, could you not go in and actually remove the diseased part of the bone and break it off and allow the good part of the bone to heal in its stead? What she was suggesting was an operation that wouldn't become common for another 100 years. The doctors took counsel and they decided, okay, we'll make this last attempt. And so they came to young Joseph, seven years old, and they said, I'm sorry, son, for the pain that you must go through. And he said, you haven't come to take off my leg, have you? And they said, no, son, but we're afraid for the pain you must endure. We're going to have to tie you to the bed. And he said, I won't allow you to do that. And they said, well, you'll have to take some brandy to deaden the pain. Of course, they had no anesthetics in those days. And Joseph said, I will not allow you to do that either, but this is what I'll do. I want my father to hold me in his arms and I want my mother to leave the room because I know that she will not be able to stand to see me go through such pain. And so Lucy Mack Smith left the room and Joseph Sr. held little Joseph in his arms and they began with the operation. When they broke off the first piece of bone, Joseph screamed so loudly that Lucy came running from across the fields to come to his aid. And when she came in the room, Joseph said, Mother, no, you must go out of the room. I, you must go out of the room, please, Mother. And so then they broke off another piece, and then another piece, and then another. And finally, Joseph fainted for loss of blood. It was a miracle that Joseph survived this operation, but not without a price. Joseph would be on crutches for four more years, and he would have a slight limp the rest of his life.